A few years ago, I made a video about recording Battlefield 5 in high dynamic range or HDR. I came to the conclusion that it was impossible to do without negatively impacting gameplay. With Battlefield 2042 out in all of its divisive glory, I wanted to revisit that to see what's changed. And as it turns out, a couple of things have, but in reality, it's still not really worth the effort. At least not for me. Let's explore that. Groovy. The gameplay you'll see in the background is just me farming bots on Breakthrough on the Renewal map. I wanted something easily repeatable and with a massive difference in brightnesses to help highlight my point. In fact, this gameplay was actually recorded in HDR and what the hell? It looks okay, doesn't it? It does. It could look better and I'll address that in a bit. But as you can see, while this YouTube video itself isn't in HDR, the gameplay was recorded in HDR while I was playing it. Not bad, huh? Looks a hell of a lot better than that disastrous attempt with Battlefield 5 a few years ago. The reason it looks acceptable is that I recorded it using NVIDIA Shadowplay, not my usual go-to OBS Studio. About a year ago or so, Shadowplay was updated by NVIDIA to properly output 10-bit H.265 files when you attempt to record HDR gameplay. So we're done, right? Problem solved. On to the next thing. Not really. A problem I have specifically is that Shadowplay is still a very limited application when it comes to recording gameplay. It's really handy, but it can't do all the great things OBS Studio can. Specifically in this case, it can only record two audio tracks. The system sounds like your game and your microphone. And I understand that for the vast majority of Shadowplay users, that's perfectly okay. But it's not enough for me. When I record gameplay in OBS Studio, I have four separate audio tracks. One for the game, a second for my microphone, the third for any in-game VoIP if the game supports it, and the fourth for third-party communication software such as Discord or TeamSpeak. I want all those things on their own audio tracks so that I can adjust volume independently in post if I need to, or even cut out audio if some idiot in-game says something racist or whatnot. I can do all that without affecting the audio in the other tracks. Shadowplay just won't allow me to do that. NVIDIA is so close to Shadowplay, they just don't seem interested in taking that next step, which means I need to continue using OBS. But OBS can't handle HDR properly. In fact, this gameplay is from that same map, just a different play session. Here, I'm using OBS Studio to record the video, and as you can see, it's hot trash. The basic problem is the data in the very bright areas of the screen is just lost because OBS can't handle 10-bit video. So in brighter areas, OBS has to default to white. And you get, well, you get this. It's painful to watch, isn't it? The solution I came up with is a lot of effort, but it does ultimately work. What I end up doing is start recording the game using Shadowplay. At the same time, I also have OBS Studio recording, but it's not recording a video track. It's just recording the previously mentioned four audio tracks. That way OBS doesn't have to composite the video and add a little extra load to the system. It's basically just producing an MPEG-4 video file with a blank video track and four audio tracks. After I start the recording on both applications, I clap once next to my microphone so that there's a sync marker in both files. Seems simple, doesn't it? Well, almost. The second problem with the shadow play is NVIDIA's continued insistence on producing variable frame rate files. I've complained to NVIDIA ever since Shadowplay was introduced all those years ago, but they don't seem to care. The MPEG-4 files come out as VFR, and that's going to cause a potential issue with syncing the sound and video up in post. Let's take a look. Media Info is an app that can give you all sorts of cool information on a file. And if we open up the Shadowplay video file and look, we can see it is, in fact, variable frame rate. Damn it. It's ideally a 60 FPS file, but you can see that it also has a low and high frame rate. How about the file from OBS Studio? Well, using the same tool, we can look and see that it is in fact constant frame rate. In order to properly sync these two, we'll need to re-encode the first one so that it's constant, not variable. And that's going to take time, and it's gonna take another application. Everyone's favorite, FFmpeg, which is the basis of OBS Studio and a bunch of other apps. In this case, I'm gonna run it on the Mac that I used to edit with, and here's the line I have to use. The basic idea is that I'm going to re-encode using macOS's video toolbox, which is akin to NVIDIA's NVENC tools. I want to set the bitrate to 100 megabits per second, since this is a 4K file. 
and I just want to copy the audio tracks over without encoding. As you can see though, this is going to take a bit of time. The AMD video card in my Mac really isn't a great piece of hardware as far as encoding goes. And the best I'm going to get is about 45 frames per second encoding speed. This is going to take about a half hour to complete. Once it's done, we can pop it open to media info and verify. Yep, it's constant frame rate. Good. With the file converted to constant frame rate, I can run through the previous exercise of adding a sync marker to the clap noise. From there, into the edit pane, and I can bring the converted shadow play video and OBS video files into the timeline. See the little blue markers in each file? We'll sync everything up in those, delete the audio tracks from the shadow play file, and the empty video track from the OBS studio file. Don't cry. Everyone loves a little angel, right? Right? As an aside here, you can see the four audio tracks that I mentioned before. The center two are my comms channels, and they're going to be empty during this entire video. I didn't have anyone in comms or in Discord or anything like that while I was doing this. Anyway, synced up and... Um, wait, something's still not quite right. It seems kind of blah. Kind of dark or bland. Not like the gameplay I showed you earlier, right? Well, there's a reason for that, and it's actually a good thing. It's almost like editing a raw digital photo from a DSLR. A bit blah and bland until you add some color grading and contrast to it. And you can do that because all the data is still in the file. This is the same thing. Remember that overly bright, blown out video from the OBS file that I showed you earlier? This file doesn't suffer that because it actually has all the data and has room to add color, contrast, and brightness. Now here's the part that I'm still learning, and that's color grading. There's probably some magic color lookup table, or LUT, that I can apply to this video track, and it'll look fantastic. I haven't found that yet. The cool thing is, though, I still have the flexibility to do so. With the video from OBS, that flexibility is just not there. When I export this video, I'm not going to bother exporting it in HDR. Why? Well, basically, I don't know what I'm doing. There's a new set of skills required to take raw HDR video and export it into, into one that YouTube can actually recognize as high dynamic range. I don't know how to do that yet. So I'm going to color grade and export this into standard dynamic range or SDR. What you the viewer are left with is a video that you can see all the details of, but you're still not quite getting the same effect of having a 1600 nit HDR display to play Battlefield 2042 on. It's truly something else. Say what you might about this game, but it's damn pretty in HDR. I just can't bring all of that to YouTube properly. Now at the beginning of all this, I summarize the effort as not worth it. And with any luck, I've successfully demonstrated why it's just not worth the effort. It's a lot of work to capture the material, convert the material, and then edit and grade the material. At this stage, I'm waiting for OBS Studio to start supporting 10-bit video because it'll help when I stream HDR games as well. And thankfully, there are conversations happening behind the scenes to that effect between the OBS developers and some interested YouTube developers. So there's a small and growing chance that this may be addressed in a future version of OBS Studio. The ATA for that, of course, is unknown, as the two parties are still conversing about it. Until then, I may record a video here and there, and I might stream some Battlefield 2042 here and there, but it'll be really hard to watch. In reality, though, since this isn't my day job and is nothing more than a fun hobby, I'm not sure how much more effort I'm going to spend on it. But with that, thanks for watching. Leave any questions you might have in the comment section below, and maybe I'll see you in the battlefield. <laughs> oh, that bomb.